What do you think is more difficult, words or numbers? It's the electric fan cave at Tomikaze. What? Does my voice sound familiar? <laughs> he went to Hello Kitty store and he got sucked in. Hey there, fangirls and fanboys. It's episode 39 of the Electric Fan Cave on electricfeast.com. Kristen Latterell and Corgan Vaughn here to spice up your life on this most excellent Tuesday. We are fresh off the heels of Kamikaze, so we will bring you all of our coverage from Stan Lee's geek extravaganza this weekend, along with our reviews of the Fast and Furious 7 trailer that came out on Saturday, and any other nuggets we can unearth along the way. So, let's get to it, because as my dad says, shoot Luke, the barn's full of pigeons! <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great saying. I, I like thought that. so. <clears throat> it, right? Good old Tom. He's always he's always full of nuggets of wisdom for us, isn't he? He really is. Yeah. More than most of them don't make sense, but no, he does have a lot of them. That's good. I had when I was in high school. I had a softball coach like that. That he uh, he always had like these really long winded like metaphors for things, and you only really caught like the end of them. So I remember like one of yeah. them was this long rambling thing he would say, and it concluded with something about like the doors closed. The you know. The barn's closed, and all you have left is the kitchen window. Yeah. (laughs) It was something, I think, about the ball in the strike zone. I'm I'm still not entirely sure, but Mm -hmm. yeah. um, But I appreciate those things, because I think the the fundamental, uh, like, there's something lost uh, on us these days, because we don't, like, use, we don't speak in, like, metaphors and things anymore. We're so... Right. You know, straightforward or talking in abbreviations or whatever. So I appreciate it. I do. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, everyone. So let's do Fast and Furious first and then we'll yeah. get into our kamikaze oh, stuff. Let's go into it. Um, you guys, the Fast and, and we, last week we gushed about how we were excited about it coming yes. out. And then Saturday. In a bittersweet way. Yeah. In a bittersweet way. And Corey and I uh, were at a kamikaze this weekend. So on Saturday is when the trailer was had its big premiere. And it so was, close. it so was, far away. yeah, so close. Yeah. So we didn't get to go to the like pr- launch party that they had, obviously, but we did watch it um, after it came out. And it was everything you wanted it to be. It was exactly, it was bittersweet. It was. It was super fun, over the completely over the top. That oh opening, this the yeah. opening entire sequence of the trailer is like just what you come to expect of the over the top, like crazy. They just get more and more ridiculous. And, and I I'd, love I'd it. almost forgot love that it. like Jason Statham was even in this movie. Like I, it's just, <laughs> and I was like, this is gonna be so cuckoo bananas. As soon as you realize, yeah. like, oh, we're adding the Statham factor to this. Oh my gosh, this is and Kurt to Russell 11. and Kurt I Russell, mean, Kurt freaking Russell. What is Snake the last time he was even? In a movie, you guys. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. That's a um, that's a really Captain good Ron himself is blessing us with his presence, and it is. Oh he only had like a bit part in the trailer. He seems to be some sort of law and order um, lawman. Person. Lawman. Yeah. Oh, like Wyatt Earp. Man. Yes, much like Wyatt Earp. <laughs> but so with cars. anyway, but it was really cool. And then I was telling Corey like some of the parts that really got me were. Just the way, and I know it was it was not so subtle, but I'm like, oh my gosh. So it's this part where Vin Diesel and Paul Walker are standing there, and Vin kind of looks at Paul, and he's like, oh, one last ride. And you're like, oh my Ugh. god. Why don't you just rip um, my heart out? Someone says, oh, he says, yeah, he says something to him about friends, and Vin goes, Vin goes, I don't have friends. I have family. And as he says that, it's like close up on Paul Walker just like standing there, like one of those, I don't know, just like looking off into the distance, yeah. and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, they they know their audience for sure with this whole thing. And, and yeah. like we were talking about last week, they've been doing all these lead up um, like short videos and stuff. And one of them did like focus on that whole family aspect. And it went through like all the scenes of them sitting around the table together. Holding and hands, yeah, praying Holding hands and, and, and praying. dinner. And... Oh, my gosh. I just I can't with these movies. They're I just know. and. Oh, uh, yeah, this trailer is everything that you that you wanted to be. It's everything you expect of the franchise. And then that extra added like layer of being like, and this is sort of, you know, a a eulogy in an action yeah. movie, mm-hmm. you know, a, a way totally. of saying goodbye um, at the same time. So, I mean, I saw it shared like 15 times on Facebook thing it says like you and 15 other people have shared this (laughs) and i was like it really hits people you know like 
uh, and I think probably even more so with this one than with past ones where like, you know, people might have liked them and gone and seen them before, but this sort of like gives it that, you know, that extra pull that people are like, this is, you know, it's the end of an era no matter what, even if they keep right. making these. Like they yeah. could make up to Fast and Furious 47, but I mean, this is certainly going to be the end of at least like a very, you know, solid era of this franchise, you know. Definitely. Totally. It's crazy. It's crazy. So it'll it'll be good, you guys. If you haven't checked it out, we're li- we'll link to it on the blog. But definitely check it out and get ready for April third and for more yeah. geeking out to come. As I was gonna it gets say, through. once March rolls around, you're gonna hear us talking about this even more. This will and... be like it'll be like Guardians of the Galaxy level of excitement here, oh, but probably more than that. Yeah, like even plus we'll also be crying. So yeah. it'll it'll be a plethora of emotions. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot happening in the fan cave, you guys. I'm just telling you. <laughs> it's gonna be like, my 13 year old self will just not know how to right. handle these things. Between so this right now, yeah, and then like the full Hunger Games, like the final Hunger Games trailer, and that is coming out in a matter of weeks. Yeah. Oh and my God. The, those trailers have been just getting progressively better. Yeah. Even the TV spots are epic. Yeah. I just saw a new one the other day or I, well, new to me, I don't know how long right. it's been out for, but it was one where she was like getting on a plane and Effie handed her like a black Mockingjay pin. Yeah. You know, and it's Effie without With her no, effiness. yeah. Like yeah. all very plain Jane it's because so... they've, you know, she's, um, I don't know, refugee essentially kind right. of. Or Anyway, so she kind of hands this to her and they have this moment and then it has that whole like President Snow, if we're going to burn, you're going to burn with that whole thing in oh, it. Oh, when and she then, gives oh, that Gale, speech. Oh, oh. it's so Man, I felt it. I felt it to the core yeah. of my being. I am so excited for this. And like, I just, I keep forgetting it so soon that I actually get to see this. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is going to be. I just feel like it's so been coming for so long. Yeah. That... And I love that with the Hunger Games, they, they do, ha- they have the balls to be like, the final trailer is a minute long. <laughs> like it's not like it's not an epic two and a half, you know, like yeah. they're like, we can say everything we need to say to you about this movie in a minute and you're going to go see it. Yeah that's that's all there is to it you know and and it's true i mean it really did everything that you needed to do in order to get you into those seats and i'm stoked last year i went like with my cohort to like a midnight showing of it hopefully well actually no because these days nobody does midnight showings anymore it was an 8 p.m showing frankly i'm into that because i could not hang the next day after midnight (laughs) so i'm all about the eight o'clock showing i hear i'm for it, in a sense, I just wish that it had the same sense of camaraderie that midnight showings used to have. That's what's that lost true. on me is just that the midnight showing was like, you guys, you're all really hardcore. You're into whatever you're seeing. People are dressed up. They've been sitting there since 4 p.m. Like, you know, and, and now with like the eight o'clock showings, they'll usually have like an eight and an 11. So people don't feel like super rushed. And they'll have the thing playing on so many screens that there's no reason to get there all that early. Yeah. And so it ju- it just doesn't have that feel that a, a midnight showing had a decade ago, you know? I, miss I that. guess. But I still kind of like it, too, because there's no, like, riots breaking out in line right. and well, people aren't losing their ish. Yeah, except at the theaters here where it's the worst system in the world. Because, you know, when you go down to the ones in, like, Orange County, they have different theaters. So your ticket will say you're seeing this on screen 11 or something like that right Mm -hmm. here they don't say what screen they are you just have to run for it and hope you get a spot that's big enough for your whole group so (laughs) it is chaos they open Uh. every single theater it's like so there's like 12 screens or something in this place all of them are playing hunger games everyone runs inside and tries to book it and get a row for all of their friends and it, it's it's chaos i don't understand yeah why they do it this way you know it makes it mm. makes absolutely no sense to me so and they'll like stagger it at the oc ones too right so it'll be like well there's a showing at 11:59 one at midnight one at 12:01 and so you don't have that like ah, this is insanity not a fan of it <sighs> yeah so hunger games <laughs> Fast and Furious are happening. I'm sorry for the rant. It's that's okay. That was you were very passionate about it. I I am passionate about it. Also, I am so tired that everything feels really emotional right now. (laughs) I was I was just telling Kristen I got I just got home from teaching for the first half of the day, and you'll notice this is not normally um, where I'm sitting when I podcast because I'm in my bed. I just came home and I got into my bed. That's all there is to it. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I, as I said, and it's voting day, 
Hey yo. So as I as I said to someone on Facebook too, like it's voting day. I'm cranked to eleven. I'm tired, sleep deprived. Two presentations this week. Lots of teaching. said about everything and we went to kamikaze which of course then cranks what? you up right like it's you yeah uh, Kristen's first press pass it was my first press pass mm-hmm. and it felt very fancy and i felt unworthy of it i'm like i don't i'm not like i'm kind of like the person who just i don't really know what to do with this so anyway so <laughs> we got that and we i mean just walking in even before we got that far i was like oh my gosh this is completely overwhelming <laughs> it's like, you know a 20 million foot tall big hero six blow up thing in there there's i mean the first pers- first thing i see is like a woman's you know bare butt cheeks and i'm like okay <laughs> this, this this is a thing there were we a lot there. of bare butt cheeks yeah I there were a lot but a lot then there was that. also like just these elaborate i mean i know you always see pictures of it but they're very elaborate and my, i guess what i didn't think of is that these people just they're not like being paid to be there they right. just like walk around like that and then they people are like oh can i take your picture and they are stoked they're like yeah and then they pose like in character which yeah. i was like I don't know why I expected that not to be a thing, but it was <laughs> it was a thing and it was awesome. Yeah. The dedication to that. I mean, like I can't even be bothered to like put on Halloween costume yeah. and like the degree of dedication people put into putting these costumes together, which costs time and money. And then the way that they, they get into that character. I mean, they're just walking around. Like you said, nobody pays them to do this. They're just walking, going about their lives. And this acknowledgement of how much work they put into it when someone says, hey, can I take a picture yeah, of you? It's like, that's it's like, like pretty much why they do it, essentially. Yeah. yeah. To For that moment of like, yeah, you worked hard for this. You look awesome. Let's, Let's get it on camera. It. Yeah. yeah. And, and you get like, uh, I saw a few like galleries and things from Kamikaze photos of the cosplayers and whatnot. So those are always fun to see because you can be like, oh, I saw that one. Mm-hmm. Was... I saw that guy like 12 times. Yeah, like, right. He was following me, actually. <laughs> Yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy were very well represented. They were at this thing, and people were so creative with the way that they did like the various characters. Mm-hmm. I was so impressed. I will say, um, at Long Beach Comic Con, there were a lot of like the potted plant version of Groot. <gasps> I noticed there weren't as many of these, probably because they all went to other cons and so were like, "This is really difficult to get around in." Yeah. <laughs> it's like really there weren't hard. even that many Groots. There was a yeah. lot of Star Lords. Yeah, tons of Star Lords and a lot of rockets. Ra- a lot of rockets. I feel like a lot of parents dressing their kids up like rockets. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I saw this great picture uh, on Facebook of a, a friend of mine from high school. She has uh, two kids, and so she and her husband were Star Lord and Gamora. And then their son was Rocket Raccoon, and their baby daughter um, was the awesome mix oh no. <laughs> right? isn't that amazing that's adorable i was like that's that's incredible because i've seen so many little kids dressed as rocket raccoon and so right. forth and then i was like that wouldn't have even dawned on me like they're yeah. like this is a useless lump of flesh let's make them an inanimate object you know <laughs> you go. So, yeah, i thought that was that's that pretty was funny phenomenal. but yeah there yeah. were so many so many of those there was there were a couple um Groots that were pretty impressive there, but for the most part, yeah. I think people have figured out that's a really hard costume to yeah, pull off. Yeah, most people didn't didn't try, but yeah. I I mean there was just yeah there I was impressed by the level of just the level I don't know what you want to call it artist I guess or yeah yeah there's there's a lot it was of just it was impressive that. so that, that was really cool but I di- it was very there's just a lot happening at once yeah and so I mean you don't necessarily like. Say I'm doing a whole lot. I mean, I'm right. walking around, but I'm like, I feel like I've been talking to people all day. And, and you like, never went to training. any of the panels, right? Huh? You never went to any of the panels, right? I did. I oh, went to did. um Thrilling Adventure oh, yeah. Hour panel with That's Jerry. Right. Yeah. Um which was cool. And so maybe yeah. I should have sat in more panels, so I would have felt less accosted by people yeah. but uh, not that anyone even accosted me that's not even like a fair thing to say <laughs> i felt like it was i felt like it though yeah. my introvert was like this is my nightmare yeah, this is your literal nightmare yeah um but uh, but i mean it was it was it was cool and it was fun to chat with a couple people and people were i don't know why i, I think so often like reading online especially you hear I think a lot of it comes out of the whole like gamer gate stuff that's coming right. where like when people are very like hostile towards you mm-hmm. Not not even just being a girl, but I'm like they're gonna know that I don't like really know a whole yeah. lot, you know. I'm not as hardcore. Just, like, yeah. I'm convinced that they could just tell by looking at me, probably because I was walking around like this. <laughs> but 
that is not the case. Like everyone is just so excited to be there and they're like tickled that if you even like stop and look at their things, like that's yeah. all they care about. So exactly. they were just, everyone's just very kind and welcoming and wants to tell you all about their stuff and is open to your questions and, um, yeah, they're Which not I really like, cool. yeah, they're not worried about you proving your nerd cred at all. If anything, they're no. like, oh, you don't know anything about this? Let me tell you why I love <laughs> they're it. They're like, don't worry. I know everything about it. I'm like, yeah. okay, here like, we go. Okay. So, and then they go on for, you know, you ask them like one question and they're off yeah, to the races, which I thought was actually kind of refreshing because I feel like yeah. lots of times geekdom or whatever, they can be very judgmental and right. very, I don't know, harsh if you're not the certain kind or whatever. So it was nice to be in a place where I didn't feel so like, Oh, God, I'm sorry that I don't know what that is, you know? Totally. And I mean, that's one of the pluses of the con is, A, that people are just so excited. They're, like, stoked to be able to tell people about things. And B, like, that you're not necessarily um, only coming across things that are well-known, right? So you're going and and talking to people about stuff that, you know, they're like, yeah, nobody knows what this is yet. We want to be a big deal, but nobody knows. Let me tell you all about it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we had some great conversations. We did. We did. We chatted with a, a couple of really cool people. Um, I'm, not, I'm like, uh, who were they? Well, who were they? I mean, well, for one, let's talk about this for a second. And and, and we're going to play you some of those interviews here um, so you can sort of check those out as well and check out these people. Um, one thing I was really excited about was uh, as we were just sort of like walking through the con, uh well, it's funny because people just walk around and they don't expect people to know, like, to recognize them. And so at one point we walked by and we saw, like, Sam Witwer. And I thought it was someone cosplaying as Sam Witwer when I saw him. Because he, like, you know, he plays like a vampire on it, being human. That's what I mean, right? I have no idea who this person is, so okay. I don't know what we're talking about. Um, I remember you saying, like, oh, I thought that. But I didn't know what yeah, the name of context. It's, I always get being human and almost human mixed up. But being human is the one with the vampire. And, Almost yeah. human is the one with... With Carl Urban, right? Carl Urban. Yeah. This gets me every time. Um. So, yeah, he's he's on being human. And he, like, kind of looked, like, pale. And, like, he might have been wearing vampire makeup. And so I was like, oh, somebody's cosplaying as him. And then I was like, no, that is, that's just legit nope. him standing here walking around enjoying the con. You're like, wow, he should really get out in the sun more. Yeah, right? Holmes, dude. Uh, oh. But then um, as we were walking around, we happened to walk by... Todd Stashwick, who is like a character actor that I absolutely love. Um, And and you may not know his name off the top of your head, but you know know him. You'll know his face. Yeah, if you saw his face, you know who he is. He's on The Originals. He is on um, Justified. He is... uh, He's on Men of a Certain Age, all kinds of things. He's he's basically been in everything, including one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural as Hell. well. Yeah, which... um. I think that's where I like learned his name for the first time. But in the if you're familiar with Supernatural and you've seen the monster movie episode, he's the guy who plays Dracula. And it is one. superb in that. So Yeah. It's a seriously like one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural of all time. So we were walking and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's Todd Stashwick. So I was like, um Todd Stashwick <laughs> we walked by and he like looked over, he's like a little surprised, and I was like, Hey, I'm a huge fan. Can I shake your hand? And he was like, Yeah and like, you know, started talking, asked me my name, all this kind of stuff, and then he like hugged me and I was like, This is happening and um and so we later went and it turns out he writes a comic. Um and so we talked to him a little about that. So why don't we why don't we listen to a little of that? You think that's a good idea? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, so uh, so here's a little bit of us talking to Todd Stashwick. You wrote it? I write it, and this is my collaborator, Dennis Calero. Right. Hello, Dennis. Hello, how are you? Good. This, is, Dennis, this yeah. is Dennis's handiwork. Right on. So you're you're the art? Yes. You're the writing on this action. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. It is about the devil. Oh, hey. Who shares likeness. Your visage. Oh, my visage. <laughs> my my countenance. Yes. I, I finished and I was like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> what happened? What have I wrought? Yeah. What is it? And I went, well, you know, and it's already gone to print. So. <laughs> then I went. so then I made him sign, I released, I had to sign release documents for my likeness. Um, <laughs> no, it's about the devil who has a crisis of conscience and quits. And he abandons his post in hell and he goes on the lam in uh, Nevada. And while he's uh, I, sort of having this kind of vision quest spiritual crisis uh, there are folks trying to drag him back to hell and if he doesn't use his power they won't uh they can't find him 
So he's trying really hard not to be the thing that he is. And so all hell breaks loose as they, as they try to seek him out. And we have, uh, it's a web comic that we've been running for the last four years. Oh, wow. And then at the end of each story arc, we collect them into a book. And then we come to conventions like this and uh, hawk our queers. Very cool. So uh, that's that. And you've been doing the, the con scene for the past four years as well, doing this? Five San Diego's, we've done Miami, and we've done this one. Now, where did this idea come from? Well, I, I play a lot of bad guys. Yes. And bad guys end up dead. Yeah. And I'm always looking for the next job. And so I was trying to just think of an idea that would go, okay, well, how can I sort of play on the villain thing and then, uh, and then still remain alive? And then the idea of, because I do, I'm a genre fan and I do have a lot of ideas for genre ideas. And so the idea of being the devil, the ultimate villain, having a crisis of conscience, that seemed interesting to me. Then I met Dennis, who was uh, working, uh, we were both working on Heroes. He was doing the Heroes webcomic, and I was acting, and they introduced my character on the webcomic. And uh, we met, and then he said, do you have any ideas? And I, and I pitched him loosely this idea. And then together, we kind of brainstormed and built the world out and discovered more characters. And he said, let's do it as a webcomic. And then uh, he said, let's release it once a week for free and just kind of keep, just put it out there as a labor of love and see where it takes us. And that's sort of where it, it has gone from there. And now three books later, uh, and we're deep into chapter four online. Uh, that's kind of where it came from. Do you see uh, you guys expanding into uh, more comics or is just this one? I think that's the plan in general. We want to tell this story, um, but sure, we have, we have a plethora, a veritable plethora of ideas, and we want to pleth all of them as much as possible. And I might, I might aura a few of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm really. I, it's still legal in most states. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. true. And you said that you're in the middle of chapter four. How many? Do you guys already have it planned out to like the end? Like you're only going to do I, five? I, 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 I absolutely know years. how the whole thing. I do know how the whole thing ends. Okay. Now. The, the stuff in the middle is actually the fun part because that's the discovering along the way and, and much of the process to which we spool it out allows for us to go, oh, you know what, I got a, I got a new idea so we can tweak it along the way as we go. I thought she was talking to me. That's my wife. Um, oh, my daughter just drew this. This is my daughter, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Red on rocket. Don't ask. Don't ask. It's a mixed marriage. Um, <laughs> my wife is raccoon. Um, so, uh, it, the, 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 the process is uh, the process is is porous enough that that we can evolve it and grow it while we're doing it. But but there's tent poles that that we subscribe to along the way that that. That I keep our course true. Yeah, and we, you know, at the beginning of, of the year, I'll break the whole story, and then send it to him, and he looks at it and goes, "How about this? How about that? How about this?" And then, uh, and then we spool it out once a week, which is allows room for us to change it along the way and alter it, and it keeps it alive as we go. That was super fun. They were so cool to talk to, and his daughter yeah. was so bored with us. Oh my gosh, she wasn't, gonna, and his daughter was dressed up like Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, and she's drawing rocket raccoons on a piece of paper and so i mean she keeps being like dad 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 like tugging on his arm and we're like sorry we're almost done and oh, have, like, he was super great and the, the, the his partner yeah the artist it with him mm -hmm. the artist um they were both just really excited they were some of the most excited people yeah. i feel like I love that. There. Just their level of enthusiasm was so much fun, and the way they're kind of like razzing each other and riffing off of each other and whatnot yeah. was great. And uh, and so I checked out the the series as well, and I do recommend uh, checking out that web series. And I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but you just heard it in that clip, so it's fine. Which was totally live, right now. <laughs> have it listed right here uh, <laughs> no but it was it's a good thing we have these cl audio clips to finish i know right otherwise we'd be useless right now yeah but um yeah so that was that was a really fun uh chat we had we also ran into a friend of the fan cave mr sebastian kadlechik uh we did. 
got to meet him. I had met him before, so that was yeah, nice. That was exciting. So those of you who have been listening since the beginning of the fan cave, you've uh, you have experienced Sebastian. Uh, if you saw the Kamikaze coverage from last year, uh, I interviewed them. That's where I met them. I tripped over their table and almost knocked it over. And we've been friends ever since. Um, so here, here's a little bit of that because they had awesome news to share with us. Tell me about penguins versus possums on Hawaii Five O. It was amazing. Uh, so last night was an episode of Hawaii Five O. Was our Halloween episode actually. So um, there's a spoiler alert. There was a killer. Oh my gosh. And. Um, <laughs> They had to track down this DVD or whatever, but uh, basically the DVD was at this comic book shop. So um, we had been actually contacted for a different show, but it was a CBS show, and that led to the Miller, to Hawaii Five O. So our stuff, our Penguins vs. Possums, and other fanboy comics titles as well, were in uh, an episode of Hawaii Five O last night. It was amazing. So there's like posters in the background. There's um, comic books on the shelf. There was even a choose a side. Um, bookmark like right next to uh, the guys while they were talking. They pick up one of the Penguins vs. Possums figurines at some point. It was really cool. It was really fun. I thought that was pretty rad that you got the uh, the figurines in there. Do you have any here now? I don't have any out right now. No. Oh well, just uh, trust me case. that they're pretty awesome. These these figurines. So uh, your number five is out, right? Yes, we debuted number five at Kamikaze this weekend. Uh, it's really exciting. This is the first single issue that we published through Fanboy Comics. Um, it's going really well, and luckily a lot of people are doing the trade plus issue five. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's really exciting. Oh, in issue five, we get a little bit more into the humans, um, which is really cool, very fun. Uh, yet another point of view on this epic war. So, I'm looking forward to reading it. Thanks for your, thanks for chatting, as well, always, you. Sebastian. Always wonderful to see you. You're my favorite uh, talking person with a podcast and a show. <laughs> You did I the like it. Yay. I, I tried. It works. It's it's fine. So um yeah, they got that awesome placement on Hawaii Five O and on the Millers, which is rad. And also, their uh, the fifth issue of Penguins vs. Possums just came out, and I read it yesterday. It's excellent. Okay, I know they were they were super cool, and there was like a whole crew of them there. Yes, yeah, behind the table. Yeah, and, from Fanboy Comics, and they're just like. I don't know. They're just like again. I know. I feel so. Yeah, I feel even kind of bad being like so surprised at how nice everyone was. But they were just like, oh yeah, oh no, it's so great to meet you. I'm like, oh really? Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> like, great. I know. And that's... they signed copies for people. And Sebastian even drew a little picture for our friend Brienne, who was dressed up like Jubilee, mm -hmm. um, which was fun. So she she dressed up like Jubilee. She was the only one even in our group that even bothered to dress yeah. up. The rest of us are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so she's the only one that even got dressed up, and um, she almost was like, people were more excited about her. They're like, whoa, yeah. are you Jubilee? And she's like, oh, yeah, I am. Like, I'm so cool. You know. And so there was a, I don't know, was it a penguin or a, I think it was a possum. And yeah, a possum fighting. and Jubilee. Yeah. Fighting. So it was pretty, anyway, pretty cool. Yeah. Nice guys over there at Which, Fanboy That's Con. the other thing, too, that, like, cons and, and things like this in general, like, always get me is these people are so good that, like, I mean, I'm a terrible artist. Like, yeah. Just awful. And in an instant, they can, like, draw these things. So, I mean, Sebastian was like, what kind of drawing do you want? And Brie was like, I want a possum with Jubilee. And so it was like, he was standing up drawing <laughs> this thing. And, like, ten minutes later, he had this, like, full drawing that he was, like, talking to people while he was doing it and doing other things. Well, I kind of thought he was doing, like, a corner, like, two heads, like a Jubilee head and yeah. a possum head. Just, like, in the corner of her comic, kind of, like, as his signature. Right. You know, sometimes people will draw a little thing. But when he hit it, was, like, a full-page sketch. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, if I'd known that, I would have had you draw. No, I'm just kidding. Right? Well, uh, if, and, yeah, if you go on the Instagram PVP comic... You can see the drawing and see what we're talking about. There's a picture of Brie dressed in her Jubilee outfit holding the, the drawing. And that just, yeah. that amazes me. I, I can't remember my head around it. Sebastian Drew, I told him that I always wished that I could be like the African rogue from X-Men. And he drew rogue with my face. <laughs> it's like, what? It's just, oh. I'm, I'm in awe of that as yeah, the least artistic person on the planet. So, that was amazing, and then maybe uh, we should have him write our comic of Votron and Historia. Oh my gosh, you're right. That would be amazing. Although right now we, uh, yeah, we we do have Jordan Car Carlman uh, 
said he would draw us. So, oh, okay. You cool. know, not as an ongoing comic, maybe not so much, but um, well, it probably would be so boring if no one read it. Yeah, but. it it would be. We would it, be the only ones that would be excited. About it. Yeah, it'd be really educational. It would be really educational in, the, in a negative way. Um, what is that? Is that a plane? I can't even tell. I don't know. We are just, today is just not our day, Corrigan. I know. Life is difficult. Tuesdays. Tuesdays are the worst. Tuesdays are like Mondays now. Tuesdays the new Monday. Tuesdays, boy, I hate Tuesdays. They make me so steamed. Weekend. Talking about the weekend. Ah, 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 ah. I don't know what that is. Remember that? Best of Will Ferrell? He has Monday. I just watched Best of Will Ferrell the other day. It was on TV. Oh, but I must no. have missed that one. That's okay. That was one with Garth Brooks when he like sells his soul to the devil to get a song. Hey, but yeah. all the songs that Will Ferrell gives him as a devil okay, are super yeah. horrible. And he's like, forget that. it. Like those are all really bad. And at the end, he like starts playing his own. That's really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. This funny. is coming back to me now. Um, cool. No. See. Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Is like Tuesday's new Monday, but Monday is also Monday. So it's just like. <laughs> so really, like every day is Monday. Wednesday is Tuesday. Wednesday. It goes Tuesday. Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. No, there's not and an then I don't day. know where it goes from there. Yeah, but something happens. Um, so yeah, but and then another awesome uh, person that we talked to was the creator of the DMC comic, uh-huh. um, as in Run DMC. And Corey had another one of those moments where <laughs> that was my favorite. They're standing there, and the it's like the editor guy who's been kind of creating this with him. And he's saying they're handing out flyers, and he hands us one, and Corey looks at it and, like, thinks she's being really funny. <laughs> it's like, oh, DMC is in Run DMC, and he's like, yeah, yes. exactly like that. Exactly. And we're like, oh, and we walk, and we get probably, what, like, five steps away yeah, from him, like, and we both stop, and we're like, wait, what? And we turn around, <laughs> and sure enough, sure enough like, there's Darren McDaniel just standing there. There he is standing there, and we're like, so we, like, come back to the guy, we're like, uh, Let's what? talk. Can we back up can we interview you and then this guy was probably the most excited person about life in the history of time even after Corey insulted his wardrobe which was probably one of my favorite parts about it Corey's uh, like are you cosplaying that was rough yeah (laughs) that happened oh are you cosplaying (laughs) okay you guys he's like oh no this is just (laughs) this is just how I dress he was like wearing like a big chain it wasn't that he looked bad in what he was wearing or anything like that like I'm like you're pulling it off it was just that like you know he's doing this DMC comic he's got to dress that way and he's like no actually I I just wear the chain and I clipped my badge to it I was like oh (laughs) I swear I'm not trying to insult you I'm not a douchebag in every possible way oh Um, worse but this guy was really cool and so he had some really excellent things to say so we have a little snippet of of our kind of interview with him where he gave us the the rundown (laughs) the rundown on the DMC (laughs) see what I did there Pun yeah. intended, totally. Yeah, why don't, why don't we just listen to that? Okay. My name is Edgardo Miranda Rodriguez, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Daryl Makes Comics, also known as DMC. Yes, which I walked by and did that stupid thing where I'm like, OMG, is in Run DMC? Yes, yes, correct. Are you getting that all day long? All day long, all year long. So we're here at Kamikaze because about two days ago, we just released our book internationally. And it's uh, getting an amazing response from fans and from critics the world over, and even people in the industry from like Kevin Smith to like Phil Jimenez to like Greg Pak, they all love our new book. And we've been working on this graphic novel for about a year. And it's an alternate take on DMC, so in an alternate reality, if DMC never picked up the microphone to become the king of rock, he would have continued on through St. John's University, got his master's degree, and fulfilled the dream of his mother and father to be an English teacher. But by night, He'd be empowered with superhuman strength, and he would actually fight crime in New York City. Wow, that's amazing. So are we talking about like a, like a Batman-style thing, or does he have powers? He has powers that are kind of rooted in some mysticism, which we'll reveal in the, reveal in the next graphic novel. But the most important thing to always know about this graphic novel is that DMC is an actual um, icon himself. Even before he joined Run DMC, he was always a hip-hop, I mean, he was always a comic book fan. His older brother kind of like convinced him to sell his comic book collection so he could actually get turntables. And All as right, a result of that, yeah. he kind of like had this kind of like illustrious career doing um, like hip hop and stuff like that. But uh, we kind of uh, went back to the origins of his love for comics and all things comic and myself and my partner Riggs Morales, we convinced him that we needed to start our own imprint. And under that, we kind of like started Daryl Mix Comics. And we've been doing it for about a year now. And uh, we started by getting Salvi Sema, who actually is the cover artist and is actually like one of like Daryl's like favorite artists of all time because when Daryl grew up watching um, uh, Captain America and everything like that, he kind of said, if we're gonna do a comic, I need to get in touch with Salvage Sema. So we tracked him down 
and Kasabi Salmon did the cover. And we also brought in a lot of our actual, like, old school, original graffiti writers to do graffiti and wild style throughout the book. So we had pencilers do, like, some amazing artwork. We passed that off to graffiti writers who just, like, vandalized the entire book. And we gave this a real, <laughs> real kind of, like, authentic look. So it's kind of like a period book in a way because it's set in the 80s. It's kind of like what Bruce Tim did with, like, Batman, the animated series. It's kind of had this, like, 1920s, 30s look, which still kind of like a little homage to what's going on in modern times. And that's what we're kind of doing with our book. So it's steeped in hip-hop in terms of lifestyle, but it's really old-school superhero storytelling is what we're doing. Excellent. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that sounds super amazing. <laughs> now, are there other books under the imprint uh, so far well, this well, year? This is the first graphic now. Right. What okay. we did for about a year, we actually promoted with a, with a preview issue, which is only about eight pages long. Okay. And we were kind of like at the same time working at this full-length book. And what we're planning to do is kind of like um, finish this story arc as a trilogy. So every year, we're kind of like going to be putting out a new volume. And as we're expanding the universe, we're actually going to take characters that are already in the book, empower those characters so that they'll eventually form their own um, titles. So everything that we're doing is coming organically, and, and DMC is kind of like the conduit. He's the brand that everyone in the real world recognizes, so he's kind of like the entry point to this whole universe that we've created. So DMC1 is technically kind of like an origin story for a universe that we create. It's kind of like our version of New York City, yeah. you know, and it's not just Man Midtown Manhattan, it's like all of New York City, from Brooklyn to South Bronx to Queens. So it's about showing kind of like a full spectrum and a kind of like, and as a result, we're telling a story that everybody can relate to, yeah. you know, and it's something that happened, again, organically, and it's been a, a fun ride the whole time. Absolutely, it sounds like it. And just, uh, how did you, I mean, are you cosplaying? Uh, no, no, this is, this. I wear, this is just my jeans. This, this is, is just, just a company, look. this, this is, is a company logo that I yeah. designed and uh, I just needed something to hold my lanyard up, so I just put <laughs> it on my chain. I love it. But um, no, I, people always think I'm doing cosplay and they don't realize that I'm actually, you know, working with DMC <laughs> yeah, yeah. and stuff. So it's, you know, it's a trip. And, and how uh, did you get hooked up with this? I mean, well, I have a history working with Marvel. I've actually, okay. like, curated a lot of exhibitions. I actually curated Joe Quesada's first solo art so um, back in 2007, and I, as part of Marvel's 70th anniversary, I curated an exhibition called Marvelous Color, which celebrated Marvel's like superheroes of color. And you know, it's kind of dope that they're finally doing the Black Panther film. Yeah. But back yeah. then, I did a whole full exhibition with about 70 different artists. Everybody from like John Byrne to John Romita Sr. to Jack Kirby, I exhibited all original artwork. So I've kind of had this background. I run my own studios out of New York City as an art director. So I've always had a hand in terms of like creatively directing and working with a lot of comic book artists. And I've worked with artists from like Carlos Pacheco to Phil Jimenez on campaigns that had nothing to do with comics, but yeah. I bring them in for my campaign. So I've had a kind of like a history of working with artists and, and cats in the industry. So it was an easy transition to start my own publishing company with DMC and Rick Morales. You should all check out DMC. It's super rad. Thank you for chatting with of us. And uh, good luck with the rest of the con. Of course. Thank and you so much. Can find you online. Well, you can yeah, find yeah, us at um, dmc-comics.com. You can follow us on Twitter and on Instagram, DMC Makes Comics. And, uh, you know, just follow us. This is a brand new ride for us, and we're just taking the world by storm. No, right on. You heard it here. Peace. Yes, yeah, so he was so like over the top enthusiastic in the best possible way, and and then DMC himself rapped for us, uh, which Dead. was rad. Um, that like that was surreal. That was that. Yeah, I felt surreal. like that was one of those things that didn't happen. Like yeah. I don't tell people it happened because I feel like I want to wait until I have proof. Yeah, and just like make sure this wasn't a thing. Just that so we, you know, like, like we did, like this did happen. This so. did happen. There's evidence of this happening, and yeah, it's just. I mean, that is the thing is like you get really famous people at these booths just accessible. Like, that's the thing. And that was the other thing, too. Like we were earlier in the morning. Um, this is before you got there. We were just yeah. kind of cruising through. And there was this random booth. Right. Not like just I don't even couldn't even tell you what section it was in. It was just randomly there. And it was like, Stan Lee will be here later. And we're like, OK, later we walked by. Stan Lee was just like hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like getting autographs from him and like, stuff. What? Like That's in the crazy. middle, like smack dab in the middle of the con. This wasn't like a fringe thing or like kind of up on a stage. It was like he was in the middle of a row, like a busy row. So he had to have walked down an aisle to get there, yeah. sit down. I mean, which he, he did like last in. year. Um, uh, I think it was last year. Uh, Jerry and I, our friend Jerry, we were just walking along, and then he like literally walked right next to me, like close enough to like just like brush my shoulder. And I like did like a quadruple take. I'm like, is this like Patrick Stewart style? Yeah. And like, I was like, is Jerry, am I standing next to Stanley right now? And he's like, yeah, you are. And then people started to notice and like yeah. hover around, which I was like, dang it, if only I'd like 
you know, thought to say something beforehand. But he walks up to this guy's booth, like totally catches this guy off guard, like this artist. Um, and he like looks at his like comics, you know, and he's got like a handler with him, you know, to make yeah. sure people don't like bu- bug him too much. But walks up to this guy's bu- booth, looks at his, co- his stuff and he's like, oh, I really like what you're doing. This is great work and stuff. And this guy is like, what? And he's then like, he like... like he like signed one of the guy's comics and like handed it to him and then just like walked off. <laughs> like, dude, that's the kind of thing that you're gonna give some guy a stroke, right? Like, like, you oh can't just gosh. walk up and do that to people out of the blue. Someone's gonna have an aneurysm. Yeah, and be just like, like, that's <laughs> it. Like, yeah, the end. Game over, the man. <laughs> They're like, I'm done. I'm yeah, wa- I'm walking that's away. That's it. I have accomplished like, not- everything that can be accomplished in life. <laughs> like. Yeah. Oh man, I thought that was great. Uh, I mean, that's that's really cool because this con is you know sponsored by Stan Lee, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna like really do anything, right? Like easily, right. you can put your name on something and just like let it go, you know, be, reap the benefits of it. But he is completely involved in every element. He's constantly on the stage. He was doing something over at the Live Journal booth because there was a Live Journal booth. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. we went through some sort of wormhole, and it's two thousand one. Um, and like, yeah, he's just so involved in the process of creating this con with, uh, with the people who originally like had the idea before he, um, signed on. So like he and Elvira came on later and that sort of helped to promote this thing and make it what it is now. It's just, oh, that's, it's incredible to me. And yeah, it's, it's that casualness to it that like, I mean, you have all those booths where people are, you know, you pay and you get a picture and a sign. So you get like John Barrowman and um, Jamie Bamber and Edward James Olmos and all these people. Barbara who are, Eden. Barbara Eden. Barbara freaking Eden. Both the blue and black ranger. <laughs> this is true as well. Yeah. I mean, so you have those people that like, yeah, you have to go up and, and pay to take a picture. But then people who are trying to promote like their comics and their art and stuff that's an entirely different thing so they'll be last year i met tom jane he was just there promoting his comic and um there's yeah it's just this very strange surreal feeling of being able to like walk in there and be like right now it doesn't really matter who you are we're all just like comic fans and creators Mm -hmm. yeah hanging out you know (laughs) it's crazy yeah yeah so that was um that was that was really fun did we did we interview anyone else when we were there we didn't. Those were our two. Those were our three, three yeah, three. kind of big ones that we mm-hmm. that we hit. We watched a couple little panels. I know we saw Stephen Moyer up on stage. Yes, who he, by the way looks good. incredible with a beard. Yeah, I'm just he put is. That out there. Mm-hmm. He's rocking the beard, celebrating yeah. Movember the right yeah, way. Yeah, he is and... correctly. He's doing it well. He was even ahead of the. I mean, he clearly had to have started in yeah October. like a while ago but i will say anyway, too, it was it was weird hearing him talk up there because yeah. of a the british accent and b his voice is like kind of high yeah it's almost like when i hear misha collins talk yeah he has that like, like deep castillo voice and he's like hey my name's me i'm misha collins i'm like and his name's misha collins yeah, and his name's and misha. Yeah. very different from castiel so yeah it's the same kind of thing where you like x minus the british part but right yeah i mean adding the british is like you know that's just a whole other level but it was like it was weird when he was up there. I also went and saw, um, because I love like those stupid ghost shows and things on uh, on Sci-Fi Channel. I went to a panel that was like about like sci-fi paranormal shows. Um, that that was that was kind of fun and weird. Obviously, yeah. it, it's like it all seems like all oh, just like normal entertainment talk until one of them starts being like talking about how she believes that Bigfoot is an elemental, like maybe it's not really like a creature that's somewhere in the woods, but it's like some sort of manifestation. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what we're talking about yeah. anymore. And you've got I've to lost the point where like, yeah, this kind of goes a little bit beyond yeah. <laughs> this is, what uh, I think about these. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, that was really, that was really interesting. Oh, there was also a really funny on that panel or moment on that panel where um, someone asked the question of like, um, basically if you could, resurrect any like dead person and talk to them who would it be and uh and so one of the people on the panel was this woman who was on like a paranormal show that was kind of ridiculous with jack um osborne as in like the osborne's jack osborne um and so she's clearly kind of like just a pretty face like (laughs) that kind of thing and she uh, at some point, she she said who she would resurrect or whatever. And Ben Hansen from Factor Faked, from Paranormal Factor Faked, he is like, so not someone like Tesla or yada. And she's like, hey, I could kill him and bring him back. And 
and and Hanson's like, well, well, he's dead already. And then thinking about it, realized that she meant Elon Musk, the president of like Tesla, the car company. (laughs) And she thought that like his name was Tesla. (laughs) Like, oh, oh, no, that's painful. Sweetheart. That was that was rough. Mm. Um, But Mm. yeah, it was it's always fun to go to those. Those weird little panels. And there was a guy who was in a Sonic the Hedgehog costume that was very, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it was huge. It was a huge thing with, like, a head, like a mascot, you know? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That kind of thing. Or and the ones so, you see at, like, Disneyland or... Right, exactly. Like, the full body with the air conditioning unit inside. <laughs> Precisely. And he was, he was standing, like, on the edge watching these panels. But, like, obviously, it's not super easy to see out of those things or whatever. So then, like, partway through the panel, he just, like, takes the head off. And, like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God! Ah! Sonic, no! Uh, the image is shattered! Yeah, but that's always my favorite thing at cons. There was him, and then I walked out of this panel just, like, giggling about this guy. And I looked down, there's a guy who had been dressed as Jack, like, Jack in the Box, and he was sitting, looking kind of like forlorn, looking around, and his head was just sitting on the table behind him. <laughs> I was like, this is a weird moment. Poor Jack. When we first got there, I saw this guy that was like intense winter soldier, okay? So like nice, crazy yeah. hair, the like kind of scary mask, <laughs> trying to drink a smoothie through it. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's like walking with his oh. friends, and it's like, you know, I don't know, the... Winter Soldier was like such a kind of a BA. You yeah, know? you don't like, really imagine like, him enjoying a smoothie, smoothie. And he's like got it kind of under the mask and he's like trying to drink it and walk. <laughs> and I'm like, this just oh. is not working for me. Right? And there's a couple of people. Then there was someone else that I saw that had kind of a creepy mask on doing the same thing. I'm like, take the mask off because it's really. Or, yeah, at least eat something hardcore if you're going to do it. Like, I'm like, babies, you got to pick one. Know. Or either yeah. you're going to be some guy drinking a smoothie or you're going to be your cosplay character because yeah. <laughs> this right here is like too yeah. much for me. Yeah. Oh, it's really funny. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's one of my favorite parts of the experience too is cosplayers doing weird things. This is I thought it would be kind of funny to have like a Tumblr or something that's just mundane cosplay, and so it would just be people <laughs> yeah. who are cosplaying just doing normal things. Like so you'll see them on the phone or eating yeah. their lunch or like you know just spacing out, staring off into the distance or like reading, um, mm-hmm. and that just cracks me up when you see cosplayers just doing normal things like because they've forgotten at this point they're in costume they're like right in this oh, moment i am who i am and that's it and it's yeah oh, it's the best it's so, yeah. pretty much awesome yeah we had a great time we did have a great yeah. time and it was yeah Kristen, why don't we just let us from saturday sign us off today Let's do that's probably a better idea yeah i mean than- uh in the meantime make sure that you you subscribe to us on all the things and rate yep. and review us and whatnot, mm-hmm. but uh, hey, um, take it away. Here's us. Sing- take it away, uh, take Kristen and Corey of us. the past. <laughs> Kristen, yeah. Kamikaze. Yes. This happened. Wait, this did happen. How are you feeling? I am well overwhelmed. There's a lot going on in here, like a lot of awesomeness. Yeah. Um, really cool people, really great costumes, really nice vendors and authors and writers and illustrators and all sorts of cool people. So it's been a really rad day. It's my first one, so now I know what it's like, so I won't probably be quite as overwhelmed with the next one, but it was really cool. So fangirls and fanboys, thanks for hanging out with us here at Kamikaze. We'll uh, we'll catch you on the cast. If you were here, let us know. We'd love yeah. to hear some of your stories as well. Um, Definitely. Any cool people you met or any things that you saw you want to share with us, we'd love to hear about it. Absolutely. What she said. Peace out, everybody. See ya. Superman and Batman was having a fight Giving me inspiration of a song I can write When I came along as the son of the bife In my physical form I, I celebrate life I don't need a preacher and I don't need a preach Give me Mel and O.D. as they speak on the beat I got a good reputation cause I rep for the streets And for your information I am king of the geeks